Now to some examples. I've defined limits and talked about strategy. I should show you how it works in practice, since the strategy and concepts are hard to understand without examples. Here is the first example, the limit of a rational function. This expression is asking what happens as x gets closer and closer to 3. I follow the process. The first step of the process is to try and evaluate the function. In this case, I find that there are no problems with evaluating the function, so I go ahead and do, do so. In this case, the first step of the, pro of the process is all I need. I evaluate the function and find that the value is 21 over 10. Now, the limit is still a statement about approach. The value of the function at x equals 3 is 21 over 10. But the limit equal to 21 over 10 says that as the input approaches 3, the output approaches 21 over 10. Even though I evaluate the function to solve the limit, the limit is still a statement about approach, about process, about getting closer and closer to something. Here is the next limit. I follow the process. If I try the first step, the evaluation of the function at x equals negative 2, then I get division by 0. And division by 0 isn't defined, so I need to move on to the second step. The second step is what I called logical analysis. In this case, the function has a numerator and a denominator, so I'll investigate what happens to each individually. As x approaches negative 2, the numerator approaches 2, and the denominator approaches 0. That's useful information. What I have in the limit is a number very close to 2 divided by a number very close to 0. Well, dividing by a small number gives a large number, so the result of this should be a large number. Then, as the numerator gets closer and closer to 2, and the denominator gets smaller and smaller, that result should be getting larger and larger. So I conclude that this is diverging to infinity. The output is getting larger and larger without bound. And this is what I mean by looking at the pieces and trying to make a logical conclusion. Now, the denominator is close to 0, but I don't know if it's positive or negative. Therefore, I don't know if the result of this limit is a very large positive number or a very large negative number. Therefore, I'll write the result as plus minus infinity. I could equivalently say that this limit does not exist, written D and E. This limit does diverge, since infinity is not a number. In this course, recall is infinity is a shorthand for the idea of getting larger and larger. However, since even though this second answer is correct, the first is preferable since it gives more information about exactly how the limit diverges. Here is another example. If I try to evaluate, I get division by zero, so I can't do that. If I try to do the logical analysis of the pieces, I find in the first fraction, both numerator and denominator approach zero. This is the third step. This is an indeterminate form. I don't know what to make of the fraction when both pieces are getting small. Therefore, in this example, I need to do more work. I need to do some algebra to understand the limit. So, let me proceed. In the last video, I introduced the limit laws, rules for splitting limits up over arithmetic. I have a lot of arithmetic here, multiplication, subtraction, division. Let me start to split the limit up. First, I take the multiplication outside the brackets and split up the limit, getting the limit of just x times the limit of the entire term inside the brackets. As I go along, I can eliminate simple limits. The first piece is here is just the limit of x. So as x approaches 1, x approaches 1. The limit here is just 1. Then I look inside the brackets. Here I have a subtraction. So I split up the limit again into two limits. The resulting pieces are both rational functions. The first is an indeterminate form, as I said, and the second can be just evaluated. I can label the first as an indeterminate form of type 0 over 0, which is a shorthand to indicate that both the numerator and the denominator approach 0. I evaluate the second to 3 over negative 3, which will simplify to negative 1, and now I go back to the indeterminate piece. For this indeterminate piece, I factor the numerator. Then I can cancel off x minus 1. After doing that, I can evaluate this limit as well. This limit, as x approaches 1, is the limit of x plus 1, so that is, of course, 2. Then the sum of 2 plus 1, 
minus the negative is a positive, gives me a result of 3. This is an example of how I use the limit laws to move the limits around in an expression, evaluating little pieces to build up the whole. This example involves polynomials and the sine function. In the previous video, I told you that the limit of sine x over x as x approaches 0 is 1. For this limit, I want to use the limit laws in algebra to try and isolate the known limit I just mentioned. This is another common limit technique. Try to take a complicated limit and reduce it or break it up into pieces that I already know how to do. Let me show you how this works. First, the numerator can be split up into two fractions, x squared over x and then sine x over x. Once I've done this, I can split up the limit over the addition. You might wonder my tactic here. There are several ways to split this up. Why this particular way? Well, I'm trying to isolate sine x over x, since I know how to deal with that piece from the known limit. These manipulations, these algebra steps, these are the steps that will get me to that goal, at least I think they will. Now that the limit is split up into two limits, I can look at the individual pieces. In the first piece, I can cancel off an x to leave just the limit of x. Then the second piece is the known limit, sine x over x. Therefore, I can evaluate both of these. The known limit of sine x over x as x approaches 0 evaluates to 1, and the other limit, the limit of x as x approaches 0, is just, well, 0. Then the sum of these two limits gives 1, which finishes the calculation.